Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EzraAutomation.com and today in this video we're going to talk about the power of Visual Studio 2022 in writing the Selenium code with the power of the artificial intelligence for auto-completing a code for us and this is really really cool to see that Visual Studio 2022 has got enormous number of features that will help us to write the better coding with Selenium. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my Windows terminal and then I'm going to show you how we can actually clone a code from the uh, GitHub repo and then how we can start writing the code with Visual Studio 2022. And the project loads pretty faster than expected because Visual Studio 2022 is running in 64-bit and the loading experience is much faster than Visual Studio 2019 that we have been using all these days. And you can see that the Solution Explorer has been loaded and it is currently trying to uh, restore all the references for us. And then let's go to the uh, pages of the Selenium C Sharp uh, page object model code. So you can see that this is the Selenium C Sharp page object model code where it has got the code something like this. It tells you that this is the iWeb element of link log of something like that and there is a uh, login button. Similarly for the login page you can see it has got the uh, txt username, txt password and btn login something like that. So if I'm going to write any code in Selenium C Sharp earlier without using the AI powered intelligence option it was a bit tricky to write uh, the code because you need to type everything uh, from the scratch. But now with the power of the AI, what it does is if I just go over here and now if I try doing I uh, web element something like this and you can see that it automatically gives me a suggestion something like btn password driver of find element something like that. Well, I'm not going to write the btn password this time rather I'm going to say uh, btn uh, forget password because that's what uh, is there in my login page and then if I just try to open the uh, lambda expression over there and you can see that it tells me the driver dot find element by dot css select r and tab to accept so once I do that it's giving me even more suggestion something like you can still accept the uh, plus if you really wanted to well I don't want that so I'm gonna say forget password well there is no such thing at the moment i'm just gonna uh, mimic as if like it is there uh, and that's it the coding has been written over here and let's say i'm gonna add some methods over here something like i'm gonna say public void uh, click uh, forget password something like that so i'm just typing over here in the context uh, of the particular coding uh, and i'm just going to open a lambda expression then you can see that it automatically tells me that I'm going to perform a button forget password and it gives me a suggestion about the btn forget password dot click for me, which is cool. So this is the experience based on the context of what it has to choose, even the property, like even you can have like multiple properties here, but still the AI gives me the exact context suggestion of what I should be using. And then let's assume that I'm going to perform a uh, public void uh, enter more uh, details something like that well there is no such thing i'm just gonna do uh, make something like that uh, and i'm just gonna write like a detail to something like this uh, and i'm just gonna do nothing over here for now and let's go back to the uh, spec flows step definition over here like login step.cs file uh, over here for example i'm just going to use the spec flows on uh, spec flow table operation which i'm going to do some sort of operation over there for example i'm going to enter some more details something like this uh, and i'm going to say given i enter more details that's the method name something like that uh, and over here let's say i'm just going to delete all these things over here uh, and then i'm just going to do something like this uh, var of data is equal to so once i do that you can see that it automatically tells me that i'm going to be doing something like a table dot create dynamic instance so this is coming automatically based on the suggestion of the code that i have typed even before this one line number 45 so it's bringing up for me over here and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do this uh probably what is the page name login page so login page dot and it gives me more suggestion, but I don't want to go with that. I'm going to do this enter more details. Uh, and over here, once I type this, uh, it shows me this string details, string detail two, which is classical, which is there for quite a long time. And once I enter this data dot, do you see that it brings me up some more details like data 
uh, oops, I just forget, it's just moving up pretty quickly uh, over there. So I'm just gonna say data dot uh, username, and this is coming directly from a dynamic keyword. And you can see that there is another suggestion coming like data dot password, which I need to enter. Uh, and then I can just use this guys over here. So this is cool because this time it's also giving me a suggestion that even before we actually write the code, it gives me a suggestion that it is not the right uh, expander object that we should be using, the username. Uh, but it is actually there over here, the username. So what we should be doing is we should be using a dynamic keyword over here so that this issue will be resolved. So we should not be using the var type there. We should be using the dynamic keyword because it is a dynamic and uh, the C sharp doesn't really know until it compiles during the compile time. So this issue is gone, but, but yes, it's giving me more suggestion this time, which is cool. And the next operation probably I'm gonna do is, let's say I'm gonna go to the custom control over here and I'm gonna write uh, an operation to click, uh, probably it's entering the text, click, select by value, select by uh, text, something like that. Rather, I'm just gonna click a, uh, probably a, a checkbox. So I'm just gonna do public uh, static of void, uh, click checkbox over here. And then I'm just gonna type the iWeb element and you can see that it automatically brings me what I need to type. There you go. So I just type the iWeb element and automatically brings me all the suggestion. So let's say I don't want to click this uh, straight away. Rather, I'm gonna do some conditional testing over here. So if I just do like an if uh, condition over here, so you can see that if the web element is null, then written, you can see that I'm not even typing anything or else, if I just hit enter, you can see that it's gonna give me suggestion that I need to do a click operation, something like this. So this is cool. I mean, this tentative changes. I mean, earlier the suggestion was coming me, like even the if condition was coming me automatically, but now while I'm trying this, while I'm trying this, it is a bit different experience. But I think uh, it depends upon uh, how the machine speed is, and also it depends upon how the coding uh, is being uh, modeled by the AI. But again, uh, this is still in the preview state. So once the whole uh, Visual Studio 2022 is gonna come up, like a full version, probably all these uh, this experience that we are seeing at the moment will be gone and it will be much, much better than uh, what we are seeing over here, which is really, really cool. And again, uh, as you all uh, have heard, probably heard, so there is a Git uh, co-pilot by, uh, by the github.com, which is released uh, just like in preview state. So it is mainly for the pair programming. So like if you type something, it brings you up the whole code like magically over here. This is looking really, really cool. Uh, and um, this is all powered by the open AI. Um, and it, it looks even much better than the Visual Studios 2022's AI feature. Uh, I think Microsoft has Visual Studios 2022 and GitHub is Microsoft's our company, uh, like a sub company. So probably they'll bring this copilot feature within Visual Studio. Uh, but again, this feature is gonna come up in Visual Studio code, I guess. So all these features that we are seeing at the moment, like writing less code and doing and being more productive is gonna happen pretty soon. So yeah, this is exciting to see all these AI features coming to the Visual Studios uh, and making our life much easier to just focus on the product rather uh, the coding itself. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.